So the next order of business is under other business. We are doing the enforcement, ratification of the enforcement order for a tree clearing on the Pride property, um, 15 to 29 Russell Street. Did you want to talk about we'll the yeah. No, these, they're here, so we're going to yeah. do them next. Oh, so they are five here. Yeah. Oh. Well, no, um, it's Pride is here, so we're right. skipping five stars. Okay. 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 It's five star here, not that I'm aware of. Hello. <laughs> um, did you guys all sign in on the, get the sign? Oh, okay, good. All right, um, so I guess, first of all, we're just wondering, um, if you've you know, thought about the enforcement order and started any uh, the work or anything, and then we have some um, ideas for amending it a bit as well. So I just thought I'd see what we you have. Can. We, we'd like to talk about it for a minute and uh, offer some suggestions and, and bring the entire board. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Bob Bobick. I'm the president of Pride. Uh, we have thought about it, we've done our homework, and um, we'd like to a minute to just to bring the board up, the rest of the board up to speed on what happened because I'm not sure everyone okay. is aware of that. Okay? So. Good. And I have with me uh, Jim Channing, our attorney, uh, Chris Wagner from BHB, the environmental person, and John Furman, partner in charge of Springfield Office with the White Work. Today, uh, I just have a very short summary, which hopefully will put all this into perspective. Um, today we've met with uh, the, your your commission twice, and with the uh, with uh, Ms. Stone and uh, your former chairperson once. Um, and the purpose was to uh, bring you uh, to to inform you as to our application that was before the selectmen for a storage license, and. Um, the, both the select board, your your town process, and the uh, MEPA uh, certificate which we received uh, had uh, uh, told us that we needed to come before you, so we did. If you recall, uh, we went through everything and you signed off on it uh, so that we could go to the next step, which is back to the select board for uh, our storage license. Uh, as you all know also, since August, when we first met with the select board, there's been many media, media articles and local television have detailed the, the, board, the desires of the select board, the police, the fire departments, the building department, and the butters for us to clear the parcels. Um, my comment, and uh, Ms. Because Deba. thank you. Um, you quoted me as saying that I said no work would be done, and I'd just like to say again that when I said <coughs> that, it was my thinking that no work would be done beyond the, until we got a notice of intent, in, the revised notice of intent back into you, and um, that I certainly did not mean to uh, fool you into, uh, when I said that, and then go out and cut the trees, because at that point I believe we had already signed the uh, contract to uh, clear the land, which which I thought everybody knew was the intent, along with demolishing the houses. And I do apologize for that. Um, we filed our ENF, Environmental Notification Form, in February of 2014, and it was approved by MEPA in March of 2014, and I brought with us tonight copies of that uh, notification and certificate for you to look at because it does specify what we needed to do at that point. And I'm not sure, I'm sure you have it in the file. Um, I'm not sure if, oh, I'm sorry, you're in the corner, you're sleeping, and I'm sleeping. Um, but this is what we received back in March, and it specifies the procedure that we should follow. Um, it does not mention, we had in our, in our uh, ENF to them, we had specified everything that we intended to do. And their comments were strictly that we contact you with regard to the storage 
because they knew that it was in the floodplain. And as you know, we did that. Uh, they did not mention anything about trees uh, or about anything else, and therefore we assumed that everything else was fine. Normally they'll tell you all the things, as you know, they'll tell you all the things they want done. So we relied on this as we went through the process. Can I just stop you right there? Because I'm looking at page three. Yes. And under wetlands and stormwater, yes. it says the Hadley Conservation Commission will review the project to determine its consistency with the Wetlands Protection Act yes. and associated performance standards, including stormwater management. Yes. Um, it's entirely located within bordering land subject to flooding. Um, it's reasonable to presume that the area of impact to bordering land subject to flooding uh, will be 1.94 acres. So it should be quantified in the notice of intent. Site plan should depict the boundary of the 10-year flood plain or flood elevation. Um, I mean, it's pretty clear it says that the commission has to review. When they say in this it review, it right. means give a permit to no, I understand. you. And, and we're not, as you know, we did file an NOI with you, uh, notice of intent with you. Right. And uh, that is still before you. We asked, I, I asked it to be held in abeyance because until we receive some indication as to, one, whether or not we can have storage, a uh, storage license from the selectmen, mm -hmm. we do not even have a pro project. Uh, and whether or not we know if we'll have a beer and wine license, that dictates the size of the building. And so, while we did file it, uh, we did, we, we don't intend to proceed on that or do anything else on that, which is what I meant when I said I wouldn't do anything else, until all that work is done. And all we, were, all we intended to do at this time <coughs> was clear the lot based on the request of various boards and uh, groups within the town and the abutters. And, and this is how we all got into this mess. Right. But your notice of intent specifically includes demolition of the buildings yeah. as part of the notice of intent. Right. And to file a notice of intent and then go forward with work being addressed in a notice of intent without a permit just, I mean, to me is inexcusable because well, it's in there, um, the work in the floodplain of clearing all the trees is something that, I mean, your gas station doesn't even show work in that area right. where all those trees were cleared. I, I agree. So that wasn't even part of it. And when you came to us in December and you had already knocked down the buildings, we said, wait a minute, you, you, you can't be doing that work without permits from the commission. So, and you kind of, or you did say to me that you were told you had people's blessings to go forward with the work. I did. And you had, but the idea that because you get a demolition permit means everybody else has signed off on the project is, is not how development happens. If you applied for to tie into a water line and the water department said, yes, go ahead and do it, just because they said you can do it and they gave you a permit to do it doesn't mean that you still had to contact DigSafe, that you have to get a, uh, a curb cut permit and things like that. So knowing full well that you have already filed a notice of intent that talks about development of the site and work on the site. Right. And then going forward with it because under the guise that, well, the town said we could do it. You didn't have all your permits in hand. <clears throat> and that is, for the commission, is a slap in the face to the commission. I understand. And we, you know, I, I will speak for myself and other board members can speak for them themselves. I mean, I thought I was pretty clear, don't cut the trees until you have your permits. Um, we told you cut it, demolishing the buildings. You shouldn't have done that without a permit from us. Um, so it's... Well, the, clearly this is where we have a misunderstanding. I, I would, we did also bring copies of demolition permits. 
and I'd like to pass those out. And, and, and I understand that the demolition permit does not have a sign-off from the Conservation Commission. Right. However, where the demolition is happening is within a resource area of, that is protected by the Conservation Commission and the Wetlands Protection Act. Well, I, so, understand, what you're, I understand what you're saying, but to my knowledge, and I've done a lot of construction, once you get the demolition permit, you may demolish. Now, if, if your town d doesn't have a link with the demolition permit issuer and say, we want to sign off on it first, you may, wish to in you may wish to institute that policy. But up till now, once you get a demolition permit, it means you've gotten all, all, all you've, you've dotted all the I's and crossed the T's according to the town law. So why? Why did you submit a notice of intent that addressed the demolition if it was not part of the work to be permitted by the Conservation Commission? That's, I mean, that's what I'm... Oh, that's simple. Okay. The notice of intent was complete. It, it said we will do everything from demolition right through. It was the entire project. We didn't hide anything. Okay. Right. And then we proceeded to get all the right permits. You did we not only, proceed to get all the right permits. Well, we, well uh, I'd like to have you come back to that one with our environmental people mm -hmm. who will tell you all the things, that, how they interpreted this. Okay. And if we made a mistake, then we're all, all of us here are here to apologize. Okay. And before we're done, we're also all here to say, how did you want us to fix it? Mm -hmm. and, and we are very happy to do that. This, that's okay. why we're here. Okay? Mm -hmm. Would you like to see all the demolition permits? They're signed by Mr. Nyhart. No, I mean, I, I, you've showed me. I've shown them to you. I've shown them to Mr. Right. If the other people would like to see them, no. there's no. a whole stack of them here. Right. Okay. All right, fine. Mm -hmm. And normally, in all other towns, I have never come across a situation where once you have this, you're criticized. Okay? Once you get a demolition permit, mm -hmm. it means you may demolish. Okay? There were a lot of things we had to do to get a demolition permit. We notified every department. And not us. Not us. I know. We noti let's say this. We notified every de department that we were told to notify by the building department who issues the permit. They give us a checklist and we had to get back to them with sign-offs from water, sewer, telephone, natural gas, um, DP for work in this, DP for work in the road, Everything. So, anyway, they say we're here to fix it. Um, <coughs> now, in terms of the trees, I have to bring up a sore subject, but that's why you're here, so mm -hmm. let's state what happened. Uh, we did uh, ask the tree warden to walk the site with us and give her, give her, and tell us if there were any trees that needed to be saved. And he advised us two things. First. In his jurisdiction, which is all the tree belts, there was nothing that he wanted us to say. We, he gave us permission to cut them down. And he said within the property, he saw, no, he saw a total of five significant trees, but that was our property, and we could do what we wanted with them. And therefore, we, we got his blessing. We also, well, I wouldn't say that's his blessing. <laughs> that's, well, that's saying, that's not my jurisdiction. But when you have someone from the town saying, right. I think you have some significant trees on the property, right. you probably shouldn't cut them down, that should be a signal to say, oh, maybe we should listen. But he, or didn't, but he didn't say you probably shouldn't cut them down. He said, that's your property, do with them what you want. <clears throat> but he also said, these there are significant trees right. that should probably be saved. And, and before we're done, you will have trees back there and you will have a nicely developed site. We're, all we're doing is, it, we're just in the beginning of the process now. Okay? It was our intention to comply with the clear directive, directive, which is well documented in all the media and all the papers of the select board, the fire chief, the police chief, the building inspector, and the abutters to clear the area. There was absolutely no question about that, and I'm sure you're all as aware of that. It's very common knowledge. It was in every newspaper and all over the place. Right, and, and we, we did contacted, and I will say for myself, when I saw they said clear the site, 
I got in touch with people and said, no, you can't clear the site because it's conservation commit under the conservation commission's jurisdiction. Well, you apparently told everybody but the right people, which was us. And that's the problem. But you <laughs> knew you're that. You're supposed to come to us. It's not our when I when I filed. used to do I consulting and contracting and I did site design and I went out and went to towns and communities to um, develop. I had a plan in front of me. I It was my responsibility to find out all the permits that I needed. You knew you needed a permit from the Conservation Commission. Plain and simple. You have a notice of intent I, that's I, filed with us. I didn't know that. I knew we filed with you and we heard nothing. We filed with you before and we heard nothing about the trees. Okay. And so we, we haven't had a hearing on yeah. it yet. Well, but we met with you on the tanks and there was And you said decided. that was just I, for the tanks, not just. for anything else. Right. So that's true. Right. And it was. Right. But then after the tanks, you then took down the buildings and then you met with us about taking down the buildings and we told you don't touch the trees and you took down the trees. I, I didn't meet you about taking down the buildings because we already had a separate permit to take down the buildings. After Absolutely. the fact when you had already taken down the the buildings. You came Ms. before Ms. this Stone board. mentioned it on the way out the door. She said you're not going to, I forget what it was, but it was not discussed. If you have minutes, we could, I'd be happy to uh, check. I will tell you very plainly that when you talked, we <coughs> talked about this with the board about the houses being demolished. I specifically said there was um, a couple of the big branches, there's a couple big trees, right. and the branches were taken off. You then said to me that so the equipment could get in oh, there. No question. And I then followed up with, you're not going to take down any more trees, right? And you agreed. No, I didn't get that. I did not apologize. So, I mean, we're almost, okay, well, let's get to the, the fixing of it. If you, if isn't that in the minutes that you agreed not to cut the trees down? I, Some of if it, I so, think. it hasn't been brought to my attention yet. I don't, I don't remember not to cut trees down. When I, when I said there wouldn't be any more, it, it was because, if you remember, the original confusion was the NOI, for completeness, said everything that we intended to do from the beginning through the process. And then, you wanted to get your peer review person in, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. since we hadn't resolved anything and gotten any <coughs> other permits yet, I said it's too early to get the peer review person in. Those plans may very well be changed and we'll have to do it over. And so that's why we stopped that part of it. And when the question was asked of me, were we going to do any more, I meant no more on the big project, but I still had in my mind that we had to demolish the buildings and clear the lot because of we had gotten the very clear message from the select board on two occasions that they wanted that area clear. And, I, and that's how it came up, and I'm very sorry. We can talk about it till the cows come home, but if we could just move on, maybe we can make some progress here. Well, there's, there's a trust issue now, okay? Yes, there, there's, I'm I think sorry about that. There, the there's select a board told you, gave you guys permission unanimously to cut all the trees down. If you were to look at any of the minutes or read any of the newspaper articles about the, there I don't care about several the articles, articles about it, they all recorded what was done. And we were told to clear the lot. They want everybody wanted all everything clear, and so it was our intention, and we can work this out to um, remove the trees, backdrag the stumps, and get them out of there, fill the cellar holes for safety purposes, and then seed it all, and then maintain a nice field in there until we get some other tenants and plant some trees, whatever you want, okay? And that was the intention. Because remember, we're not working in a wetland itself, we're working in a flood plain. It's a wetland resource area. It, it is a, it's a wetland resource, resource area. 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 I understand that. It has the same protection as a swamp okay. or a river well, or land underwater when, or when, bank. When we come to that, I have some experts here who mm -hmm. will handle that part of it far better than I will, so that's okay. not for me to say, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me just finish up. That I also want you to know that we did contact the Department of Fisheries, uh, Wildlife and Fisheries, 
and note if we had uh, Chris here, who's our environmental expert from from BHB, their main office in Watertown, and he personally checked it and notified and, and uh, um, uh, wildlife and natural heritage that there were no endangered species within the property and there were no uh, rare plants within the property that had to endanger plants. And therefore, based on that, we contacted Natural Heritage and we felt we had done everything. I apologize for the mix-up, but we did attempt. And they issued a notice of non-compliance to you also because the well, plans that they that. had were just for a portion of the lot. Right. And you did the entire lot. Right. The clearance you got, what Janice was just saying, the clearance that you got from the Endangered Species Program was for the plan that you submitted. Is, we have copy right here, January 7th, 2016. I'm going to turn that one over to Chris because, and then I'll come back. But, mm -hmm. but to our knowledge, this does not show not compliance at all. Chris, you want to take this one? Um, yeah, I, I don't think we received a copy I'm of that. Not, so I'm not aware of this. That looks like the same one that I have. It's addressed to Mr. Bolda. Mr. Bolda. Yeah, dated. That's dated the set, January 7th. January 7th, 2016. Yeah, we have, we have yeah. that. Yeah. They just received that letter. We don't have that one. Oh, we don't have that. We have a no take letter, but we don't have it. I don't, I'm not aware of that. Letter. Someone must have contacted them recently because have we don't have that. We have, we have an approval by them. Well, we had an email that says, please see attached NESHEP uh, letter regarding the unauthorized activities conducted within priority habitat. Hard copy will be sent to Mr. Bolduck. If you have questions or require a hard copy, please contact our office. Is it that, possible um, we could get a copy of that? Because we, we, has, yeah. we haven't seen that. Yeah. The, the permit that they issued was for the work shown on the plan, not for the entire site. The work shown on your plan that was submitted to them was the gas station, which was located in the vicinity where the Aquavita restaurant was. Um, I don't believe, or I did not see anything in your filing that talked about clearing the entire lot. Because well, that would have thrown up red flags yeah. to us I, and to them. I've got to turn that over to these gentlemen because I, yeah. you know, I didn't handle that part of it. Mm -hmm. Why don't you address the standards? Sure. Yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening. I'm Christopher Wagner from VHB. I'm an environmental scientist in the Watertown office, as Bob mentioned. And uh, I just want to say a few comments, limit my comments to talking about the performance standards for BLSF. So my understanding of the work that was done was work in, in BLSF on the site. Uh, and so in uh, my uh, reading of performance standards for BLSF, it, uh, although the work was done, um, has, already been, has already been done, it doesn't appear that the work has, um, has run afoul of any of the performance standards for BLSF as it, as it applies to this site. We, my understanding is there's been no fill that's been brought in, no grades have been substantially changed. So there's been, there's been no change in, in uh, compensatory flood storage capacity. Uh, I also, uh, I've, I've been to the site as well since the activity and, and have seen, you know, sort of the minor um, uh, disturbance involved with the machine, you know, running around in terms of earthwork. But there are some piles there that have clearly already been there. So those, those piles were, they, they have, you know, they have remnants of weeds and other plants growing on them. So I don't believe that any grades have been changed, so no compensatory flood storage capacity has been changed in the site. It also doesn't appear that uh, any um, uh, contours have been, sh have been changed to it so as to restrict any, any flows on the site, which is another performance standard, that flows not be restricted. And uh, thirdly, it, it doesn't appear that uh, any of the area is um, would be designated as important for wildlife habitat capacity since it's uh, not in, within the 10-year floodplain. Do you know what the 10-year floodplain is? Because it's not shown on the map. It's not mentioned Correct. in there. Um, also, you have a 100-foot buffer zone, but it's an approximate 100-foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. 
um, the wetland line that you went off of is not a wetland line that's been approved by the commission. Okay. So that 100-foot buffer zone is not an official 100-foot buffer zone because we have not reviewed or approved the wetland line. But the, to the extent that a buffer zone would extend onto the site, it would have to be from across the street and down the slope on the other side. Yeah. So we, we would be looking at the, the, ro the maintained road shoulder. So uh, th the tree, you know, there, there really were no trees. We don't know that. We don't so know that. We had the wetland delineated and, and the boundary confirmed. We really I mean, don't. We, you can't just say, well, we think that the wetland line is here, therefore the 100-foot buffer is there, and commission you accept that. That's that's not how it works. I no, I under, I understand what you're mm -hmm. saying. I'm 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 just saying that from my experience, having been on the site, I know that there is a maintained mode roadway shoulder mm -hmm. of, of at least eight feet onto the site. So that 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 would have to extend that that buffer zone, essentially. Right, but we don't know where that buffer zone lies. I I understand. And and I guess the. I understand you saying, well, there's no change um, in the bordering land subject to flooding, and we believe we met the performance standards. Well, you know what? We haven't told you you've met the performance standards. And when I, I mean, I went through because Mr. Bullduck informed us that you guys gave mm -hmm. him blessings to clear the property. Yes, that he said you did not have to get a permit from the yes. commission to cut the trees or to work, demolish the buildings. So, so Bob, and Bob can talk to that. That was that was a that's a that's a mis misunderstanding. It again. seems like there's a lot of misunderstandings that are going back and forth. Um, to tell me that there's no permit required for you guys to go in demolish buildings in land subject to flooding, or to cut trees within land subject to flooding, when clearly, under the Act, bordering land subject to flooding is a resource area, Correct. activities require a permit, which your company knew because you indeed filed a notice of intent with us, and under activities, alter includes cutting of vegetation. Right. So if we you apply the same standard that you're applying, there would be no trees down along Aquavita Road um, because that may be out of the 10-year floodplain. Now, I, I take your point. I just want to be clear that I'm not stating that w there's no permit required. Oh, I, good. I'm saying that the performance standards, <coughs> in our view, in my knowledge of the site and my observations of the site, have not been transgressed, let's say. But you've had procedural violation by doing the work without a permit. And so, the, and, and we can talk about, uh, you know, potential uh, actions, but I'm, I'm just speaking in terms of uh, performance standard violations f for the purposes of <clears throat> an, an enforcement discussion. There's, there's no, uh, there, there haven't been, in, in our view, there have not been any uh, violations of performance standards based okay. on my observation. Do you site. know where the 10 year floodplain is? So we have a flood storage, uh, excuse me, a, um, a flood study. From the, ha the Hadley uh, flood insurance study, which mm -hmm. shows the difference between 100 year floodplain elevation and 10 year floodplain elevation on the two inches of the Connecticut River to be between 6 feet and 6.6 .6 feet difference between 100 and 10. So the, our elevation on the site is, uh, max elevation on the site is 125. So that would put us at a maximum elevation for the 10 year floodplain at 119. Mm -hmm. We don't have any area on the site that is at that elevation. John can no. confirm that. <clears throat> the lowest elevation on our site is 120. So we are not within the 10-year floodplain at any point on the site. Okay. So that's we, not on the plan. It's not on the plan. We don't have that. We didn't have that information before us. Right. So I'm presenting. I mean, I'm just presenting it to you to you now for the purposes of this discussion. Okay. That's all. Yeah. 
We have a copy of that <coughs> if you would like it for the. Yeah, you can have this. Copy. Really have this in it. No. I would just say, too, that in the notice of intent, it showed the buildings and the comp storage um, it des yeah. described the site as being wooded, at least some of it. Mm -hmm. So it, you, you obviously did work beyond what was proposed, what was presented in the notice of intent. I mean, without any permit, you, you described the site as having buildings and trees. And before getting any permit, there are now no buildings and no trees. So your calculations are now have to be redone, right? Well, the, the calcul. I'm, I'm John Furman from from mm -hmm. BHP. The, the calculations for the flood storage are unaltered. What about drainage? You, you, your calculations for drainage were based on a wooded site. It is no longer a wooded site now. The How are you going to address that? W when when the um, we can update the uh, the drainage study um, when we get to that point, but the uh, uh, surface of the ground has not changed. It's uh, still it, it, what's out there before is still the same. Um, the trees are gone. The canopies are gone. The, um, the the survey that we had described it as a more of a of a brush type of uh, cover over there. Um, so um, we can update that, but on the on the the difference between um, um, a a ground cover that is a forest versus a ground cover that is a uh, a lawn area, which this clearly is not yet, but we're we're looking to to get, it is not that is not that different as far as runoff goes, and the way that the site is currently graded, the water all stays on the site anyway. It doesn't roll off anywhere. It drains to a bowl in the center. Our existing conditions map shows that. So, so the impact to the drainage off the site um, is minimal, is minimal if nothing, because the water just isn't going anywhere. It drains to a hole in the middle of the site. That's where the low point is. It's higher on the edges mm -hmm. and goes to the center. So uh, if you were to take it and pave it, um, the water, would, just as the contours right now, the water would still go to that area. So um, we, you, you make a good point. Um, the drainage calculations can be updated um, the, on the existing conditions. The proposed conditions won't change because the proposed conditions are what we have now uh, proposing, but the existing conditions, you'll, you'll see a little bit more runoff. Right, I mean, the proposed conditions did not include uh, clearing and putting lawn yep. and trees and plant making a park-like setting. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I mean, I think I, I'm respectful of the of the of the board and the commentary that that's going on uh, right now. Um, I mean, we we've kind of established that things occurred that weren't in the the right procedural manner and stuff. And um, you know, we value your opinion on how to how to resolve it. But we're here to kind of to see how we how we make make it whole and what makes you happy. So, um, you know, um, it, it, as you know, going forward. Um, if there's nothing more that the board wants to, you know, bring up about what may have been a misstep or a miscommunication, maybe the best course of action now is to get into what the board would like to see if, in order to, to solve this. Um, again, we don't have the letter from Natural Heritage that there was a, a, a notice of noncompliance. It hasn't shown up on our end yet, so we'll we'll address that when it when it comes in. But. Um, if we can go through and, and look at, you know, moving forward on it, uh, we'd be happy to have a, uh, a meeting outside of here on site to, to look about resource areas, to look at the wetland. Um, we're here to address what, what you want as a board. Okay, I mean, uh, I know specifically we need to know um, where that 100-foot buffer line is, um, where Lay the wetland is engineer. across the street. Sure. I don't need to fly. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, we'll have to get permission from that property owner mm -hmm. um, to, to do that. Um, I don't know if you have a, a contact versus a, uh, us making a cold call, it would be be helpful, is. but you know, we can't flag it if we don't have permission to get on the site. Right. So, um, one of the things that uh, um, Chris didn't mention is that when we, prior to filing a notice of intent um, and notifying a natural heritage, Chris actually uh, did a uh, uh, inspection of the site before um, 
anything was cut down and looking at it from a rare species and a habitat perspective. So we have that report, uh, which I believe we did uh, in uh, early September, uh, which we can give you a copy of. And that documents our findings before any work um, happened with respect to the quality of this parcel with respect to habitat areas. Mm -hmm. I, I know the commission would like that. I know fishers and wildlife are going to require that sure. because part of mm -hmm. what they're talking about is a restoration plan using native species. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we've talked about is we need to see a full development plan for this site. What's mm -hmm. going to happen? Um, can, can I interrupt you for one second? Have you seen the plan that was included in the, uh, the MEPA document? We have the plan that you guys submitted to us. I don't know what the MEPA document is. The, 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 you, do you, do you know plan. what the MEPA document is? Yes, but okay. I don't know the, I don't know okay. the plan. The, the, uh, you should have received a copy of that as part of the distribution back in 2014. I can, I can clearly get you a copy of that. Um, mm -hmm. um, but what it, what it is, it basically it's the, 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 the full development of the site, and it took account into uh, uh, setbacks. Uh, green space coverage parking area by planning it was a full build out of what this site could actually could actually handle so uh, we can we can get you a copy of that if you don't have one for uh, your records but it's it covered the whole site the MEPA the MEPA filing requires you to look at it as a project as a whole and not look at it in, in segments so we looked at it as a whole but once we got approval we're all right to build in segments so that's why this plan wasn't submitted for the whole site we don't have any tenants for anybody else, but we do know what we want to build on that corner. So without any, any hesitation, we can get you that plan. Um, and it would go along with the certificate that Mr. Boldick handed out. And so did you tell Mr. Boldick that we, you did not need a permit to clear the site? Um, we, Mr. Boldick uh, had, had contacted us and asked us that uh, if it was all right to clear the site and if he thought he would get into any kind of issues with, with clearing. Um, Chris and I consulted, and based on the information that we had saw from the Board of Selectmen and the, all the other departments asking uh, Mr. Bullock to clean up the site, and knowing that we had the, uh, a notice of intent in, uh, we said, we think uh, you're all right to, to, to work in the, in the, on the site as long as you didn't affect any of the performance standards that we had here. Okay. Uh, and so that was a that was a mis that, a misstep That's a very a big mistake it for was. a company of your stature. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know as well as anyone else when you you cannot work in any type of a resource area without a permit. You yeah. work you gave him advice to work in a resource area when you knew you had a permit pending. Yes. I mean the the commission has we have come down extremely hard on other people who have worked in the floodplain without permits. This is like this isn't even a hidden site. And you know, I drove by and I don't even know when the work was done. I drove by on New Year's Eve and saw that all the trees were down. I hadn't gone by for a few days before then, so I'm not sure when they came down. But when did you guys take the trees down? What what day was it? I don't know exactly what day they didn't tell me, but it was somewhere <coughs> in the two weeks uh, between and around Christmas. You don't remember what day it was? It wasn't Christmas. It wasn't was, New Year's Eve. It was. New I was Eve. not. I was not present. I was in fact out of town that week. Most people do that on you know, New Year's Eve. They usually you know do something else other than cut down trees. Well, I was on unless vacation. it's shady. I, I, I was on. I was on vacation with my family and my grandkids. Uh, okay, I was too. Okay, year. what day would it cut down? Simple as that. I don't know. Anybody? Are you guys for no. you? Know what day it was? It was done by Rocky Mountain. They're <laughs> the biggest firm in the area. Pretty Rocky. simple question, buddy. And I don't know the answer, but I'm telling you it was done by a very reputable firm. Um, they're the biggest in the area, and they do that type of work. And the contract was given to them some time before, and they did it when they, they put it on their schedule and did it. And I didn't happen to be around that day, and that was it. 
That was it. Huh? Simple as that. I'm and sorry. If they I'm are, sorry too, because you got lawyers and everybody else up here. Nobody can tell you what day it was. I, I was told I don't even know what day it was, but everybody all down at Hadley yeah. told me it was New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. That's well, I can find out what day it was, but I don't know. If that not. don't put up a red flag, nothing does. I, I mean, see it's why doing it that week puts up a no, red flag. It's not the week. It's New Year's Eve. I don't see when why that the majority of people <laughs> are either yes. out of work early. <laughs> Um, the next day is a holiday, then it's a long weekend, yeah. no one's able to get in contact with anyone. I mean, I sent out emails that night, New Year's Eve, saying they cut the trees. What yeah. happened? I, can tell you. I didn't get any responses from Janice or DEP yeah, until the following <coughs> week when people came back. Frankly, it should have been cut down weeks before that. I it was not. What, I didn't tell them what day to cut it down. I, I went by that site until Christmas Eve, and the trees were still there every single day. I did not go by the following week until New Year's Eve. I'll find out what and day. But, but the day is not, we didn't, we, there was no discussion about what day it should okay. be done. But I guess, again, part of the... The, there's a there's a big trust issue here. We've made that clear. Mm -hmm. The fact is, when you violate the wetlands, it is not only the contractor, but it goes right back. It's the owner, it's the contractor, it's everyone working on that site. So if they are a big and reputable company, and they knew that there were all kinds of permits, did they know that there was a notice of intent filed on this property? I don't know, but we've never met with them personally. Okay. If if they did, they shouldn't have been doing anything if they were a big, reputable company without a, a DEP sign saying that, look, we have our permit to go forward with the work. Um, so it's very disconcerting to the commission to have you come and say, well, we screwed up, sorry. Let's make it pretty and let's go back. Let's. We don't think we, we screwed anything up, so let's just kind of move on for that. We're having a hard time moving on from that, only because it's a really bad example. It, it's a, mm -hmm. for everybody. Yeah. I, I, there's only one thing I can say in my defense, okay? All along I've known that to be a floodplain, not a wetland, okay? It wasn't until you told me that a floodplain fell under the Wetland Regulation, Re Re Wetland Resource Act, that I knew there was any connection between the two. All this time, I did not think that was a wetland, and I, and I had no connection as to what date they did. I signed the contract for that weeks and weeks before, and they said they would get to it when they finished up their other jobs. I don't know if it was New Year's Day, but I'm telling you, there was no intent here to deceive. It was all, that was it. That's all I knew about it. I've never had one before that's just in a floodplain that didn't have that. And, and that's it. And the, the ENF, Janice just pointed out to me, the ENF that you filed specifically talks about wetlands. And it says the enti entire, this is your application. This came in, I believe, on the one that was... I and the company do not profess to be experts in this area. <coughs> we did not do those forms. We hired a firm to do those forms. Uh, it says I'm sorry it, about the thing, but... Uh, name of contact person, John Furman. Firm agency, VHP. Oh. Okay. So... I mean, there's no way that anyone at our company would have the ability to do that. We hire experts. Right. And, I, right. I and stand, it says specifically that the entire project is located within floodplain, which is a regulated as a bordering land subject to flooding under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Small area that falls within the 100-foot buffer zone of a vegetated wetland. Virtually all of the bordering land subject to flooding on the property will be altered as a result of the project. Um, as part of the notice of intent permitting process, the proponent will conduct a detailed wildlife habitat evaluation of undeveloped portions in accordance with DEP guidance. Any important habitat features identified 
will either be preserved or will be replaced in accordance with established protocols. The application that was submitted specifically says it is a regulated, um, regulated under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. To my knowledge, yeah, we understand that. And, and we did everything that it says in there. We contacted Natural Heritage and all that. You did the okay. detailed wildlife habitat analysis? We did. We did? Yeah. We haven't submitted it, but we can get that for you. Mm -hmm. We did that back in, I think, early September? September, right. that was that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We, so, we, again, <coughs> this is... And I just, I would just like to clarify one point with that we discussed earlier, which was um, the VHB's communication and where I think there was yeah. a miscommunication, because it appears my recollection of talking about this site, I've had, I've had sort of on again, off again, somewhat limited interaction. I wasn't very involved with the preparation of the notice itself, so I wasn't involved with a lot of the uh, understanding of what resource areas were on the site until quite recently but um, in the discussion of whether or not it was okay to proceed with the work uh, my I believe what I said was is if they're outside of the buffer zone and not impacting a resource area and so I think it's this misunderstanding of Bob's not realizing uh, that BLSF was in fact a resource area is okay. where that miscommunication John are you aware that BLSF is a resource area? I oh, am. Yeah. Yeah. So Mr. Bulldog, Bulldog said that you told him it was okay to proceed. I did, yes. So you gave him the authority to go forward to work in a resource area? Uh, yes, but I, when, again, when we, were, when we were thinking about it, it was, a, a, it was just an issue between Chris and myself, and we right. misunderstood what the actual work was. Okay. Yep, there's no denying that. So, where, what, we, where we stand now? Well, we have an enforcement order mm -hmm. that we need to ratify and potentially amend with a couple of different. I, I talked to DEP for quite a while um, about the enforcement order and what should be in it, and then talked again with them afterwards some more about it and how to fine tune it because we were wanting to get something out immediately before the vehicles came back and started clearing the site, the rest of the site. So um, one of the things was obviously whether it has any 10-year uh, floodplain or 100-year buffer zone in there. And we could not tell from the maps that, that we had. Um, and therefore, I think what they suggested for one thing is to get us the plans that show whether there are any, what the 100 foot buffer zone and the um, 10 year floodplain um, elevation is uh, on the site, and that we also need to get that wetland delineated. It may not make much difference, I don't know, but we can't just go on. This is, you know, this is what we estimate the, the wetland boundary is, and this is what we estimate the 100 year floodplain is. So once we know for sure whether there's any 10 year and 100 foot buffer zone, um, on the site, then we can decide if there needs to be any mitigation or not. And there may not, other than having to do some recalculations of your um, uh, comp storage and drainage mm -hmm. and stuff like that. The, the, um, so the, the study, we, we, we can prepare a formal yes. response on that. So the study we have, we can identify the actual elevation of the 10 year and we have the survey map before any work was done. And you can clearly see that we don't have any tenure. Um, the other thing that we can provide um, with that is uh, the copy of Chris's uh, wildlife uh, evaluation. So you, okay. you'll have that and uh, what, he, what his findings were on that. Um, the um, wetland resource uh, area that's across the road, uh, yeah. we will we'll attempt to contact that owner and get access to his mm -hmm. property. If not, the best we can do without having any access is continue to estimate where it is because we physically can't trespass on his property and get that. Um, I do know that in that corner of the property, the right of way uh, is very wide from where Old Bay Road hits uh, Aqua Vita Road. Um, so um, we have very little 100 foot buffer on the property. Um, we do know that, but we'll, we'll try and, and fine tune where that is. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so that's minimally that needs to go move forward. Mm -hmm. um, and once we have that information, we then um, I think we need to know what's going to happen <coughs> on this site. I mean, we have a notice of intent in before us. Uh, we continued the hearing to February 9th. What's going to happen February 9th? What, would it be appropriate to amend this uh, notice of intent prior to the 9th to um, show the development of the entire parcel? Um, because we, we have the design plans for the entire parcel and we just carved out this piece for the station. Um, and that gives you the I'll whole know. picture. Will that affect that corner that we voted on at the last meeting where they put the gas tanks? It will affect the development of the site, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the <coughs> gas tanks are not, or the, the location... The gas station, yes. The gas yeah. station convenience store is not planning on being moved, is it? No. Okay. That's correct. So... It wouldn't, that wouldn't have any effect that on wouldn't that. wouldn't have an effect no. on that. My, my concern is that if it, what you do over there is going to change what happens here, we voted on something that's going to happen right yeah. here. Now, if that's going to go over there, we don't want to end up in the same boat again. Yeah, no, um, no, we, under, we understand. So, I mean, when we filed the, the MEPA document, document, we created a master plan for the entire development. We have numerous... Uh, uh, in, um, revisions to that plan to try and find one that fit with the development constraints that we had. So once we got that uh, nailed down, that's what we submitted to MEPA and all the state agencies commented on. And that's what we're bringing forward with our site plans here. So we just didn't show the rest of that site, but we have that available to us. So, so if, if it's appropriate to amend that notice of intent so that you have all of that information available to you, we're, we're happy to do that. I guess one follow-up question to that, um, your amend development of that entire site, is it feasible under the zoning bylaws of Hadley? Or is it something, because I seem to recall looking at the plans, that you would need variances um, to, in order to develop the site to have, I believe it cited something like, to have multiple buildings on a site, on one property, you would need a variance. Um, uh, I, I don't feel comfortable understand. approving something contingent upon variances. Yeah, I, do, I don't recall that being the case with the development, but I'll, I'll look into that I, and make sure. I don't either. There, there, there were no variances needed in all the plans that I looked at. Uh, I think it says it right on the plans here. Um, only one structure allowed per lot, therefore a variance may be required. Special permit for common driveway may be required if lots are not com um, not combined. Variance right. will be required for parking front setbacks. Right. So, so the intent so, was was that um, if we combine the lots all into one, that mm -hmm. note would apply. But the intent was to create a, a um, cohesive development there, but not join a lot, so that you had. A principal building there's plenty of frontage everywhere on the site so we put that note as a cautionary note that if you know the, the sites are joined into one you would have to file for that special permit and the special permit for the driveway um, is just uh, it, it's not a variance it's it's part of the, the bylaw if you want to have one driveway serving multiple uses um, you required to have that special permit so I don't believe that to be the case that uh, we needed a variance for anything, but we'll we'll go through and make sure. Right, because if you don't combine the properties, is your coverage in violation of each of those property lines? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something you need to look at right. um, in in the development. Because I know variances aren't under our jurisdiction, but self-imposed or self-created hardships are not are not allowed under right. variances, so. I agree. I think that really needs to, you need to look at that for the site. 
So what do you want to say? Do you want to change the... Um, right now... That needs to be done. Right now, um, the enforcement order, if everybody has it on page three of the enforcement order, it says, no further work shall be performed until a public hearing has been held and an order of conditions has been issued to regulate said work. The property owner shall take the following actions to prevent further violations of the act. One, cease and desist from acti any activity on the site, including removal of woody material. Two, um, we had uh, initially said hire a third party consultant to inventory the number and size of all trees cut down within the wetland resource area to be submitted to the Conservation Commission before their next meeting and attend the meeting uh, tonight hey. to discuss the actions. No. So what we need from the Commission is um, what do you want to see happen? We can remove these through an amendment before we ratify, we can ratify with um, amendment or you can just remove the second or we one can and, remove, then, right. and then amend to add, well, like you're saying, or to provide us two. with mm -hmm. um, better plans that show 10-year and 100-foot yep. and buffer and if, wildlife. And if I could interrupt, uh, Bob just had, had mentioned to me that um, maybe the updating of that plan set to show the entire development, um, because he just doesn't know what the other tenants are. We All we can yeah. do is represent what right. the... Um, uh, MEPA document showed. Uh -huh. So would it be more appropriate then to, uh, I guess, have a, either a supplemental filing or a, a, <clears throat> like an RDA that includes all these documents that would be specific for this action? Th then once this got behind us, you would have this plan set sitting there waiting. I, I guess, I, I don't know the mechanism yeah. to I don't know get you the information that you need. Filing. No, I think, I think what we want to have minimally is um, the additional information, the wildlife habitat inventory assessment, whatever you, you conducted on the site. Um, we want to, you gave us um, this information, but we would like it we in a letter or onto the plan saying that this mm -hmm. is the determined, this is where the 10-year floodplain determination is. Um, the only additional filing we would have to do would be based on um, getting permission to uh, flag the wetland on that property yeah. because we'd have to do a determination of the boundaries and then that would Couldn't be... Couldn't we do that under this one? I mean, the boundaries don't show, but that could be added to the... But if we don't... Attempt. But at this point... <clears throat> what I'm hearing yeah. is that this notice of intent oh, I see. may be continued until you know exactly what the development of oh. the site's going to be. I, I, I think what we would like to do, uh, and Bob can join in here, is that I think we want to address the concerns here, uh, do whatever we need mm -hmm. to, to repair what was done, and then get back onto a place where we can move forward. And moving forward at this point is only with this gas station corner development, mm -hmm. because w w as um, other tenants come in, they'll be responsible for their own permitting. And what we're trying to do is whatever uh, non-floodplain area that we have on the site, we're minimally using it with each development, and then saving um, a, a chunk, I guess, if you would, for the next person. And so then we're trying to keep moving it around. The, that set actually has the um, floodplain calculations, and I think under the grading plan that we had there, uh, we increased the 100-year flood storage by, 50, I think, almost 16,000 <coughs> cubic feet. And the comps are on, I think, sheet C10 of that. I think that there, plan were just some, there were just some total, I didn't see description of foot by foot. It, it's on uh, sheet C10. Okay. And uh, there's a there's a calculation on the side, I believe, of foot by foot. Yeah. Those existing. 
So just with the grading that we've done on that portion of the site, we were able to generate 15,000 or I think, if I'm not mistaken on the number, almost 16,000 additional cubic feet of storage. So with some creative grading, we can apply that to other areas of, of the site. Um, it, it's possible. It, it can be done. So we can... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do it with what makes the most sense in terms of trying to approve everything when you don't know exactly what's going to happen in the yeah. future versus what, the, you know, you want to get done now. Yeah, it, it would almost seem that a, uh, a, a separate filing from this might be more appropriate to address the con concerns of the commission, get you the in additional information you need, and almost doing like an RDA. An RDA could also capture the wetland delineation and yeah. that would, right. right. So, yeah. so if we did an RDA, just take this plan set, put it on the side, and then we, as part of the enforcement, give you an RDA that you can walk around with, address all the issues, mm -hmm. ha have all the information that you need. We come to a resolution on that, get back onto solid ground, if you would, and then we can move forward. So the, the, the determinations, what would you want for determination exactly? What is um, the 100-year and if there is any 10-year um, floodplain? I uh, mean, what are the well, questions that you want? Well, we'd, we'd, we'd be asking for the confirmation of the wetland line. Yeah. yeah. Then and we would be able to establish the 100-foot buffer zone. Right, yeah. And yeah. then we would also, based on the information, um, be able to say that there isn't um, a 10-year flood plan exactly. mm -hmm. on there. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we would establish where the resource areas, resource are, and buffers on the property are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and it, as part of that, what we would hope is that we could, um, uh, you know, I wouldn't say rely on the commission, but actually get input from you on what restoration you would be looking for as part of this. Because with the RDA, we would like to come in with a mitigation plan that would satisfy your needs in getting this, you know, solid and stabilized again. I think before we look at mitigation, I know <coughs> I personally would like to look at the habitat um, information, the assessment, the information okay. on sure. there first. Um, because I know um, one thing DEP has said to us is, you know, we're not going to require you to, or we shouldn't require you to restore an area with plantings and trees mm -hmm. if a year or two years from now you're going to come in and say, we're going to blow down all the trees and mm -hmm. dig up all the grass because we want to put buildings on it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where we need to kind of figure sure. out what Re recalling, we want to see on that property. Recalling the development plan, mm -hmm. just from the top of my head, we, we had some fairly substantial um, areas that were um, not not developed. Mm -hmm. The setback, I think, along uh, Old Bay Road, I believe, is like 35 feet. So we were doing restoration or planning restoration for that large project in that area. So we, we do have areas where we um, we know that are that are protected because of the uh, the building setbacks. You just can't go in there. Mm -hmm. So those on the development plan, and again, I, I don't recall what that that building setback mm -hmm. is, but it was fairly large. In relationship to the building we had planned, so those might be candidate areas for for restoration and plantings. Mm -hmm. so and, and again, and along that road, that is where most of the uh, um, 100 foot mm -hmm. floodplain is on, on Route 9. It, it's very sparse; it kind of comes in and out. But mm -hmm. almost all of Old Bay Road is within mm -hmm. that area. Okay. All of a sudden, we live in town. We've all gotten phone calls on this project. What the heck? What what the heck happened there? You guys clear cut the whole parcel. What what did we, as a committee, give you guys permission to do? And this is why you're here now. This is why we're button heads a little bit now. We live here. We get this all the time. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got to come up with some t type of mitigation or something to make it sure. so that we we so that I can look my neighbor in the face in the eye and tell them that we did the best we could and, yeah. and we're very happy to do that it's been our intent all along is to make this into a nice looking part property for you right well we, we just started by doing what we thought we were supposed to do and then we were going to fix it and I mean then improve it and so 
you know, I've said that enough now. But yep, you have. But clearly, that was the intention. It was not to get in any trouble ourselves, not to get you in any trouble. Mm -hmm. It was to do the right thing. Yep. Do what we have been told by everyone else. Well. And we filed, as you can see, we did file everything. We didn't, you know, there's some, I found there was a <coughs> mistake made, but outside of that, our intentions were, were solid. We're not trying to come in here and, and make a mess of things. The, I think just to, to back up that statement, the, the, the MEPA filing clearly showed the intent of what we wanted to do here. The entire parcel was going to be developed. It wasn't that we went into MEPA and said we're only going to build on the corner and then we wiped out the entire site. That is not the case. The intention was always to develop this entire parcel and it was filed through the state that way. So, um. Okay, so I guess... Uh, we need the RDA for the wetland boundaries and resource areas. Um, I would like a copy of the development plan from the ENF, just a copy of that, and then the wildlife assessment. Anything else? I guess that's all for me. Okay. What so, happens in the meantime? Nothing. Yeah. No, I just just mm -hmm. was clear. Yeah. Just was clarified, right. so that we all know where. So at this I'm sorry, point, sorry. What was the question? I didn't hear. What, what happens, happens now? Meantime? What happens in the meantime? You know, so the notice of intent. Yeah. 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 That's what we're. That's what we're. That's what I want to have clarified now, and so that everyone knows the print media and the television media will, will know and understand what's going on. Well, so try to get the uh, the wetland resource area extent. needs to be first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then the other information you have, right. it's a matter of transmitting that to the commission. Um, if for some reason the owner of the property says no, you can't go on it, we would appreciate information to that, so that maybe we or someone else in the community would be able to grant that permission. For this work to be done because it we feel it's necessary for mm -hmm. us um, for this uh, property so mm -hmm. yeah so what do you want me to do on here on so we would number delete number two um, and in its place replace it with that the applicant will file the request for determination to establish the wetland and any other resource boundaries. Um, we'll, and then also the <coughs> submit to the commission the wildlife assessment um, and a copy of the development plan that was filed with the ENF. So with that, we would need a motion to ratify the enforcement order um, with that those amendments, removing number two or re and replacing it with the RDA um, development plan and wildlife assessment. Okay, I make a motion to be. Uh, having a senior ratified. Ratified. ratified thank you the enforcement order to include the points that you mentioned second okay. did I cover everything yes. okay. thank you. so do we have any further discussion okay all in favor aye aye, aye. any opposed I do okay uh, any abstentions okay. we find this here right yeah, yeah. Okay.